if I had to, if I was being pressured publicly to provide a proof of assets, and I know that I either A, don't have all the dose coins that I say I do, or I've already loaned them out, what I'm going to do is spike up the shorts, get the uh, get the price of Dogecoin as low as possible so the people that um, I have loaned the coin to can have a wide enough spread to make it attractive for them to um, pretty much buy back in, return those coins that they borrowed. And at that point, I can provide the proof of assets to make it seem like, oh, hey, nothing's happened. Welcome back, YouTube. So in today's video, I'm going to have to change the direction of this a little bit. Um, just because we've seen this massive spike up in shorts today uh, with really no positive catalyst. And as you, if you've been following my videos, you know that typically there is a positive catalyst where shorts jump in immediately to try to kill the momentum. And now out of nowhere, quote unquote, there is a massive spike up. And by massive, I mean over 178% increase today alone. Um, that's, that la that's that final green candle you're looking at here. Um, and the charts right here, this final green candle, that's today. Massive, massive uh, increase in spike, uh, excuse me, an increase in shorts. And as you can tell, this video, I'm going to be talking about um, the Binance situation that's going on right now. And I believe this actually may be a play because now the public is kind of gearing up. And I know they're seeing a lot of the tweets and stuff like that. This could be a play to get some of those coins that they potentially possibly have um, loaned out to get them to return to go ahead and show this proof of assets that they need to to show that they actually hold a Dogecoin. Because if what we've been talking about on this channel for the last few days and uh, ultimately what is a major concern is that they don't have all the Dogecoin that they say they do or they've already loaned it out. And this could explain this huge spike up in shorts that we're seeing right now, because this is a similar play that we see in the stock market. If I had to, if I was being pressured publicly to provide a proof of assets, and I know that I either A, don't have all the Dogecoin that I say I do, or I've already loaned them out, what I'm going to do is spike up the shorts, get the, uh, get the price of Dogecoin as low as possible so the people that um, I have loaned the coin to can have a wide enough spread to make it attractive for them to um, pretty much buy back in, return those coins that they borrowed. And at that point, I can provide the proof of assets to make it seem like, oh, hey, nothing's happened. I find this a very I find it very coincidental that we're seeing this spike in shorts today, because typically, um, as I've been covering for the last few weeks, uh, typically this does not happen. We do not see this type of spike increase unless there's a positive catalyst and they're trying to fight momentum. This is really, really a big coincidence. And I really don't think it is. And if you don't know what I'm talking about as far as for the situation that's going on with finances, they haven't provided a uh, proof of assets for the amount of coins that they um, that they that they own, the amount of Dogecoin that they own. Um, they've done so with a few other coins, but the initiative here is, especially since now we're keeping an eye on shorts and we see the consecutive manipulation here is, okay, well, we need to know how many coins that you actually have. And this is what we've been talking about as far as removing your coins off of the exchanges because they're pretty much being used against you uh, in a negative way because when you short, it's typically they borrow the coin from the uh, brokerage and then they sell it immediately, putting uh, a downward pressure. So pretty much the coin that you bought that caused positive momentum or you know positive buying pressure, they are going to borrow that coin, AKA duplicate it and sell it immediately in the market to get it to go the opposite direction. Yeah, I know, should be completely illegal, but that's a separate video. But that's pretty much what's going on here with the situation. And we need to find out, uh, okay, hey, to what degree do you um, actually have the coins that you're stating, they're stating that you have? Um, over half a million people are pretty much in the finance loop that have a quote unquote Dogecoin on this platform. And we need to know, OK, well, do you have the assets to back this? Because this is something that we've seen across the markets. This is something that we see in our banking system is, you know, fractional reserve banking, where you go to the bank, you put your money in, they loan it out, collect interest and all this kinds of stuff like that. Well, you collect the interest, they loan it out on a mortgage, you know, uh, charge them a premium and, you know, pay you your little pennies and in interest and they get to keep the spread. This is very similar to what shorting is in the market. And the question is whether or not if Binance is double dipping, because if they are, then, OK, you just kind of need to say that. Just, you know, just kind of be direct with far as, as far as where you're making your money. I know that typically it's not common practice to 
um, come out and see these things. It's just that retail over the last couple of years, they're kind of putting the pieces together and you're able to see, okay, well, this is how these brokerages, these hedge funds and stuff like that are able to generate additional revenue. And this is, you know, again, this is a very, very common practice. That's why we're going to see a lot of these um, brokerages start increasing these staking rates and all those kinds of stuff like that, because they make a fortune um, pretty much just flipping uh, the, the the spread that they have on these coins, because initially they can, quote unquote, double dip by having a large number of coins on the platform and then use them for people who want to take bets against the platform. So they're making money with the transaction fees when you buy and sell on the platform. They're going to lend the assets out and collect a borrow fee on the um, on the platform. They're going to have premium fees and stuff like that. Premium programs send you additional information, stuff like that. They can make revenue from that. Uh, depending on the platform, you can have payment for order flow on there and the stock market. It is a number of ways that they that they make money. But when it comes down to shorting, this is a very popular way for people who actually never have a position in the asset. So it's, it's just you come in and it's nothing but actual like ne literally negativity, negative, a negative approach on an asset. And you say, I don't even want to buy into the asset and simply wait for it to go down and sell it. You're coming into the asset and saying that, OK, I want to borrow the asset and then sell it immediately to encourage it to go down to collect the spread on it. And of course, this opens up like the window as to why this should be illegal. But with when it comes down to Binance, we actually have no idea as far as for like the actual record keeping of the uh, of Dogecoin. And we really need to find out what's going on with these coins, because um, I again, as I started this video, I find it a very strong coincidence that now we're seeing this spike up in shorts. And if I have to guess, I'm assuming that someone is trying to get these coins back so that they can provide that proof of assets. Now, if I'm if I'm not, if I'm wrong, then that's fine, but if we see like over the course of the next few days, next week or so, if we see continuous short momentum like this or if we don't see this uh this spike in shorts, if we don't see an equal uh red candle going down, this is pretty much them trying to readjust the books before this proof of assets come out. Now, if this proof of assets comes comes out in the next few days or so, we're going to know exactly what happened. This is why it's fundamental that everyone remove their coins from different these brokerages and have them on your own private wallets. I don't care if it's a nano wallet, um, you know, if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. It's literally the um, it's literally the theme behind this actual movement. That's the whole purpose of um, of, of crypto. Um, technically, you can find the same similar situation if you have a large amount of money in the bank and you go there and say, hey, I want to withdraw it. They're going to flat out tell you they don't have it or you're going to have to order it. Um, you know, this is a very similar situation because they literally don't have it. They've loaned it out. It's went into the system. It's gone and they're not able to produce it. And we're going to find ourselves in these situations where if we don't keep a close eye on these on these exchanges and stuff like that, they're going to duplicate the system that has been rewarding for people on that side for so long. This is one of the things I said last year when Gary Gensler was talking about the crypto market as the wild, wild west and stuff like that. If we are not careful, the crypto market is going to turn into the mirror image of the stock market, of the banking system. This is one of the things that we have to stay on top of with these different exchanges because they're only going to build, they, they only know how to build one thing. And that's the system that already exists. So and, and we can say crypto is the, you know, um, it's a free market and, you know, DeFi and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff like that. But the, I'm telling you, they will rebuild the system that already exists. They will rebuild the system that already exists. The only way that we can find out what um, what assets they have and whether or not these coins are, are whether or not they're literally duplicating these coins into like infinity by uh, having a two to one ratio is if we remove the, our coins from these exchanges. If they want to lend coins, that's fine, but make them go get the coins on the open market themselves and then have them lend it. Don't let don't you buy the asset. They collect the money and the transaction fees and stuff like that and then turn around and lend out your coins. No, if they want to have a stash of coins that they want to lend out, that's fine. But make them go buy those coins on the open market. Let them have some skin in the game versus saying that, oh, we're holding the coins for you and then uh, lend them out and try and, and collect money from both ways here. Or, you know, it's it's really 
a duplication of the system that we've had so many issues with over the last few years. By all means, I know it's an extra step. Get you a Nano Wallet, um, Nano S, um, the My Doge. You know, get your wallet, get your uh, crypto out of these exchanges so that we can see what's what. The manipulation is there, and the numbers do not add up. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have, so we like the video, share the video with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more from me. And don't forget to check out BlockFi as well. If you want to open an account with them, you can get up to $250 in some of your favorite crypto. And that is including Bitcoin and Ethereum. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Until next time.